Well, good uh, afternoon, everybody, and good, good uh, afternoon, uh, Alicia. Thank you for uh, uh, being with us and speaking about uh, configura configurational explanations. Um, and uh, let me just say that Alicia is uh, an associate professor of political science at the University of Milan, La Sta Statella. Did I say it right? Statale. Statale. Okay. And thank you so much. And Professor De Monte, the floor is yours. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. So, first, uh, um, okay. Uh, now, uh, thank you for having me. And um, uh, this is a wonderful opportunity to share some of the intermediate step uh, in this long journey that actually uh, started more than a decade ago. Uh, and uh, just for gi to give you uh, a couple of, of uh, uh, indications on, uh, about the background and uh, how the problem uh, uh, arose. Uh, uh, I started with the problem of executive accountability and democratic delegation chains. Uh, there is a discourse, a narrative, an analytical model uh, in political science that uh, considers, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, the problem or the basic idea of accountability as a matter of uh, uh, ability of voters to punish by uh, voting executives and, and their representatives out of office uh, based on uh, outcome. This is the, the retrospective uh, uh, theory of uh, vote. And uh, uh, the underlying model is uh, assumes that voters send signals uh, while uh, uh, selecting their executive uh, uh, and uh, their representatives uh, in the legislature. Uh, then uh, the, the legislator and the executive uh, uh, come with uh, a certain mandate for uh, uh, shaping policies, and uh, these uh, mandates uh, uh, are taken by the implementers, and the implementers yield the outcome uh, uh, on which basis, of course, the voters will uh, decide whether they are happy or not uh, with the, their government. The point is that, of course, from a perspective governance uh, and, and from a policy and uh, from a, re a regulatory perspective, we know that the design of interventions uh, uh, really matter because they actually uh, shape the behavior of the implementers and uh, uh, decide uh, who gets what, uh, when and how. Uh, and uh, they are mainly this design, uh, policy designs are mainly the decided within uh, the, the endogenous dynamics uh, that involve the executive, the political executive appointed uh, legislator and the standing committees in the legislature. So uh, the point was uh, how can we ensure that uh, uh, these design uh, can, uh, I mean, in, be better from the perspective of can yield better outcomes. And one of the, uh, again, in political science, one of the theories is uh, mainly Americans, but then it traveled a lot through uh, international organizations. Uh, uh, the basic idea is that you can uh, uh, constrain the design uh, or the, 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 the rule makers uh, by making them accountable to expert bodies, judicial bodies, public uh, and interested. This is the, the, the theory of the fire alarms, basically. Uh, and, uh, but from, uh, let's say, from the uh, uh, European, more European uh, literature, uh, a number of uh, uh, side effects uh, and important side effects were detected. So uh, it was, uh, uh, for instance, said that uh, in, in this way, the, the, the designer would uh, have suffered with an, and, and the implementers would have undergone um, uh, multiple accountability disorders, for, uh, for instance, that would uh, uh, shape uh, blame games and so on. So actually what was uh, intended to, to, to yield better outcomes actually uh, was uh, uh, worsening uh, the problem. Uh, and uh, um, the issue was how could we adjudicate between these two alternative uh, hypotheses? Um, and, of course, there are a lot of 
uh, studies on topic, um, the way I try to address it uh, uh, is uh, also because the, the, the idea of a, what is a good outcome or what is an improved outcome is quite hard to define. So um, if you take the problem from the perspective of corruption instead, uh, the, the basic idea uh, borrowed from, from Ostrom uh, is that out, outcomes are good when they are perceived as fair. Otherwise, there is a high perception of corruption. Uh, and of course, uh, it, it, it renders somehow distrust uh, toward the, the working of the, uh, the institutional uh, uh, setting. And uh, the problem is that uh, high perception of corruption uh, is actual, uh, I mean, has consequences uh, just because uh, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you believe that uh, uh, the system is corrupted, then you will behave as if, uh, and therefore will try to uh, get some uh, access to, to what you have the right to, to access, but uh, through unfair or, or um, corrupt, uh, ways. So uh, another point that can be borrowed from, from, from Ostrom is that monitor matters to perceive fairness. And so the hypothesis is uh, if the accountability vectors uh, and transparency are in place, then you have lot perceived, uh, a low perceived corruption. Otherwise, the perception of corruption is high. And this can be, I mean, the, the, I, the, the basic hypothesis through which one can test the effectiveness of uh, these uh, accountability vectors on the outcome uh, and that are, is relevant for the uh, later voting behavior. Uh, and the question is, of course, how can we know if it holds uh, or if we have to reject it? Uh, in the case, uh, it may be that just some vectors are important uh, or some mix of, of vector. Uh, and uh, how to know my answer is run a QCA. Uh, run a QCA because uh, it uh, can be uh, geared toward uh, uh, an explanatory usage, although it's not uh, the, the main or the most popular one. Um, the, the, in this way, the, the technique uh, applies Boolean rules to identify which combinations of explanatory factors are sufficient, are sufficient compounds. And it does so by dropping logically relevant factors to the same outcome uh, based on pairwise comparison. Uh, just to summarize the best, the main steps. Uh, so first, uh, uh, you have to select a theoretically relevant population of cases. Uh, here I tried, this is a just an exercise. I tried uh, with uh, uh, Europe and so let's say major democracies, more or less consolidated democracies. So we have uh, the whole of the European Union uh, uh, plus uh, uh, of course, uh, Norway, uh, the UK and uh, uh, the Australia, New Zealand, uh, and the uh, uh, United States, uh, um, Canada, uh, and uh, uh, the selection of the factors. So how to render these different uh, uh, vectors of accountability. Uh, the perception of corruption is, uh, of course, taken uh, uh, from uh, um, Transparency International, while uh, every other operationalizations of technical bodies, uh, robust societal um, vector, the publicity of uh, uh, rules, uh, and the right to be informed, the right to know, uh, so accessibility of, of uh, documents, uh, plus uh, uh, the role of the judiciary in enforcing uh, these uh, rules, uh, um, are all taken uh, by the World Justice Project. Uh, so these are operationalizations uh, and uh, that uh, are ready-made on the one side, but they are quite uh, close to the um, meaning or the concept of each of these factors in the mode. And so uh, 
QCA doesn't use it uh, or, or the scores as such, uh, but uh, it, it uh, requires that they are turned into uh, a degree of certainty. So how certainty, how certainly uh, a case displays or lacks that special factor. Um, there are, of course, different uh, techniques to turn uh, um, an observation into a degree of membership into the set of cases that display that special uh, feature. But basically, uh, if you are certain you, the, 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 the case will score one, if it, uh, it, it certainly does not display uh, the uh, that special feature, uh, it will get a, a zero. F, and if uh, we cannot say uh, that would be a 0 0.5, uh, the, the implicit rule is that uh, you don't want to have 0 0.5 cases because you don't know how to classify them and how to use uh, them as if uh, a po an instance of the positive or the negative uh, uh, um, factor. Uh, and uh, there are two, two uh, way of gauging uh, membership. The one is fuzzy and the other is crisp. Fuzzy is uh, uh, actually a score between zero and one, while crisp is just zero or one. And there is a note that uh, is uh, worth uh, uh, noting, uh, a point worth noting that is uh, the fuzzy scores are for rendering the degrees of certainty about cases membership into the set, but the factors only come in two crisp states, so the, the factor is there or not. Then uh, the remaining of the analysis, I'm skipping some some uh, uh, part, but uh, uh, and just focusing on the main. You list every possible combination of factors, state, and you get this truth table. Then you uh, classify or assign each case to a combination, uh, and uh, uh, you get the observed primitive. Um, and uh, after uh, having assigned cases to uh, combinations, you calculate the consistency of sufficiency of each uh, observed primitive to one outcome or the absence of the outcome. Um, in uh, my case with the, 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 the in my study with uh, um, the cases that I selected with the population selected, actually of 32 possible uh, combinations or realizations of this uh, presence and absence of each factor, uh, I uh, get these seven observed configurations, so these seven observed primitives, and four of them are uh, positive, three of them are negative, so can be assigned to uh, the positive outcome, and three of them can be assigned to the negative outcome. The uh, four uh, to the positive are the number 26, uh, the number 30, number 40, uh, 24, and the number 32, and the remaining ones, uh, 25, 17, and 01, are assigned to the negative. Uh, and the, you, the, the calculation of, or the assignment to an outcome or the other uh, is uh, made uh, based on this uh, formula uh, and uh, it's a parameter of fit. Uh, at this point, uh, uh, it's not so relevant that we dig into the meaning uh, just because uh, uh, we will see it later on. But uh, uh, please consider that uh, is a ratio of the membership of, of membership. And the, the one consider, uh, the first considers the positive uh, outcome and the second uh, uh, considers the negative outcome. So after you have assigned these configurations that you know basically that uh, uh, there are configurations to the positive, configurations to the negative, and then you start to minimize. Minimization uh, is performed by an algorithm, uh, classically the Quine McCluskey algorithm, uh, and it's performed by um, comparing these uh, uh, observed configurations pairwise. 
and by dropping that uh, unique or the single every time the single factor that is varying while the remaining is uh, remains constant um, and uh, you get actually three kind of uh, three kinds of uh, uh, solutions depending on uh, the use that you make of the unobserved configurations. So, so if you uh, do not uh, take into account the unobserved configurations, you have the uh, so-called uh, conservative or complex solution. If you use uh, any possible unobserved configuration uh, just uh, for dropping a further uh, element without any uh, concern, theoretical concern uh, for the, the plausibility of the operation, you get the parsimonious solution. Uh, and uh, last, uh, if you correct the parsimonious minimization with cons theoretical considerations, uh, that is to say you uh, block those minimizations that uh, make uh, assumptions about uh, factors uh, uh, that are not uh, plausible in reality, uh, then uh, at that point, uh, uh, you get the so-called intermediate. Uh, there is, of course, a debate in QCA whether uh, the parsimonious instead of the intermediate should be taken as uh, the main uh, uh, solution to be discussed. And we will see in the end that maybe this uh, uh, idea of configurational explanations can also provide some kind of uh, indication. Uh, on uh, which one deserves uh, the, the, the discussion. But okay, in my case, I have, uh, I'm quite lucky uh, and uh, because uh, I get uh, the parsimonious minimization basically uh, says that uh, the enforcement of the judiciary is that which makes the difference between, uh, you know, the, 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 ca the cases that uh, uh, got the, 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 the low uh, perception of corruption and the cases that uh, got the high perception of corruption. So, but then uh, the intermediate and uh, the uh, conservative uh, solutions uh, add further terms. Uh, so I have, uh, for instance, in Austrian Belgium and uh, Australian Canada, you have that uh, you may, uh, those are accounted for by uh, the technical vector or a robust society, despite the uh, right to know is not so strong, according to, uh, of course, our measures, our uh, gauges, uh, uh, while there is another, including France, New Zealand, Germany, and so on and so forth, uh, where uh, all these factors are present. So it's a more, I mean, uh, elaborated uh, explanation uh, than uh, uh, the enforcement. That's, and I take these uh, to be explanatory uh, just because uh, I have a theory and uh, I find that the dropping of irrelevant conditions uh, may be enough to clarify uh, which bundle of, of uh, uh, factors are actually accounting for the outcome in subpopulations. Uh, and of course, I have also solutions for the positive and solutions for the negative. Now, uh, what's the problem? The problem is that uh, this is not taken <laughs> to be explanatory uh, by the, 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 the scientific community, uh, political science and beyond, policy science and so on. But regulation is maybe a different uh, um, um, territory where uh, QCA is uh, not problematized as such. Uh, but and fortunately, but uh, the, the point is that uh, elsewhere, uh, you get this kind of uh, considerations. Uh, you, you, the QCA can't uh, distinguish between logical and causal relationship. Causal relationship uh, are correlational. Uh, so are covariations. Uh, now, faced with this, uh, I studied and uh, I tried to uh, understand whether these kind of criticisms were uh, standing on a, on a robust ground or not. So explanation and causation, uh, uh, the, the topic 
actually drove me quite far uh, in the past uh, because uh, the question uh, of why are certain X uh, uh, having some Y behavior? Uh, is uh, as old as uh, the Western canon of, uh, scientific, of the scientific method. Uh, and uh, and the, 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 I mean, an interesting thing is that uh, with, with some adjustment, you see it uh, uh, defined uh, in, uh, I mean, the Aristotelian canon, this is posterior analytics. The example is taken from posterior analytics, Aristotle. And uh, you find it uh, traveling through uh, up to Ample. So, uh, I mean, 50 years ago, uh, which it's quite long uh, away. And the idea is that uh, basically, um, if you want to explain, if you want to explain, you have to establish causation. And to establish causation is actually to uh, define uh, or, um, a valid uh, syllogism. And the valid syllogism uh, is based on a rule uh, like uh, near things do not twinkle. Uh, the case, uh, the example, planets are near things uh, and the inference, and therefore planets do not, uh, do not twinkle. So the explanation is just the way uh, the, 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 it works the other way around. Uh, you explain that the reason why planets don't twinkle because planets are near things and the near things do not twinkle. So this is the mm, basic uh, idea uh, of uh, the covering law uh, that uh, haunted uh, the, the, the mm. humanities and the social sciences for very long. And uh, it, to some extent is uh, still there. Um, and uh, Sorry. Um, uh, Alicia, yes? would, would you mind maybe we ask the participant if they have the clarifications uh, questions, just to make sure that they follow? Yeah, uh, if at all, I'm not sure Whenever that there you, are. Yes, yes. Uh, anyone Whenever wants to, want. to ask a clarification question? Uh, let us let us uh, give them a, a few seconds. Yes. And yes. then in the meantime, we can, um, you know, look at your nice uh, slide uh, a continuity of the of the first one and now with this you know the part below cause excellent. anyone if not um, I gave you opportunity to to rest and now you can continue thank Please. you thank you uh, this is uh, uh, the the Concentric cycles uh, is uh, the actual uh, it, it Venn's rendering of the uh, basic syllogism uh, uh, that we saw uh, before, uh, and uh, the, 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 you see the basic idea is that uh, uh, these terms are uh, simply um, including uh, each other. Uh, and uh, so uh, the, the things that are not twinkling uh, are the, the, is the widest uh, category, uh, including uh, near things, uh, which include planets. So the causal inference actual, actually is just uh, the connection between uh, the wider category and uh, the smaller category through the intermediate category. And, uh, uh, another point uh, is that uh, the linking term, so the middle term, the one that, that, that connects the rule to the case, uh, is the cause, is considered to be the cause. So this is uh, how uh, formally it can be understood, the, the idea of, of the causal factor. Uh, and it, it's the one that actually answered the, the, to the why question. Uh, and uh, it's uh, an interesting point. This is a further interesting point. Uh, uh, there is the original uh, theory about the four causal factors, uh, uh, again, uh, systematized by Aristotle, uh, saying, okay, 
you, this cause, this middle term can't be anything. Uh, you have to use uh, uh, one of those causal factors. Uh, and these causal factors are, uh, you can refer to the components of the thing that you are trying to explain, the arrangement of the parts, uh, some external pressure or the purpose. Now, of course, there have been, uh, across histories, there have been uh, a lot of uh, interpretations about uh, uh, these uh, elements and uh, the external pressure that is the efficient cause uh, is currently considered to be you know, the trigger, the tool, uh, um, the one that, that the thing that you operationalize when, for instance, uh, you run an experiment. So the external pressure is uh, the actual uh, uh, stuff that you want to make control and uh, you want to operate on. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, in uh, uh, sociology and the social sciences, we know that actors are purposeful. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, they, they, they aim to something and uh, we don't have to uh, recall uh, the theory of action to uh, identify the possibility of, uh, again, accounting for something by the purpose of uh, the actors that uh, we uh, are uh, trying, we are investigating, uh, while components and arrangement may again, refer to uh, very, uh, let's say, modern or current, uh, 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 sorry, uh, current elements such as, uh, again, the institutional design, the, 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 the factors that are uh, deployed, the resources and so on and so forth. So uh, it's uh, everything shaping a certain kind of, of situations. And since long, I mean, we have given this list of uh, possible factors and you find them uh, um, into uh, explanatory models or uh, forecasting. Uh, so I would hold them as, as valid. Uh, um, as a valid suggestion as uh, to, 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 to uh, select uh, factors. Uh, the case may be decided by classification or measurement uh, and the, the, the whole problem of this uh, architecture uh, is or this uh, device, this reasoning device uh, is uh, how to establish the, basic, the, the rule. So uh, how do we know that near things do not twinkle? Uh, and uh, of course, uh, um, you may assume it, uh, uh, and that turns uh, the whole exercise in a circular uh, uh, reasoning. Uh, and uh, also, this is uh, why uh, the Aristotelian uh, machinery uh, fell into uh, this regard, uh, to say the least. Uh, but uh, uh, of course, there are solutions to, to this problem. And this problem is the problem that uh, uh, we are all facing when trying to define uh, uh, standards for uh, good forecasting, for instance. Uh, um, now, uh, logically, again, logically speaking, the, the, the solutions that have been elaborated uh, over time uh, in uh, the modern, not the classical, but the modern uh, conception of uh, causal analysis, uh, uh, again, starts from something that uh, QCA shares, uh, that is to say, considering every possible realization, given two factors, so one, uh, so the, the, the simplest um, uh, idea is uh, uh, you have one factor that is your alleged causal factor, uh, and uh, you have one outcome, and uh, they may be absent or present, uh, so uh, uppercase uh, it means uh, present uh, and lowercase means, means absence. And so you have uh, given two factors and two states uh, of uh, each factor, you have four possible observations. You can observe instances that carry the uh, clockwise from the top right corner. Uh, that carry the, the factor and the outcome, uh, carry the factor but not the outcome, uh, don't care the factor and uh, uh, neither the outcome. And uh, the first, fourth one is uh, uh, the one without the factor but with the outcome. So um, 
the standard way of uh, understanding or studying uh, or uh, getting to a rule focuses on uh, the uh, instances of uh, the factor. So the cases where the factor is present. And the idea is uh, uh, in regularity is that whenever you have uh, Z, you should uh, observe Y. If you don't observe Y, this is the, 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 the black swan. So it's a, a violation of the regularity. Um, and so it's uh, usually uh, it has been uh, uh, gauged by Kolmogorov's conditional probability. I use this rendering just because again, it allows, uh, uh, I mean, uh, um, it, it, it travels, uh, it can have a, a Bayesian rendering, it can have a set theoretical rendering and it can, it, it can have a probabilistic rendering. So it's some kind of uh, uh, Rosetta Stone of, of a different uh, way of understanding uh, regularity. So, and uh, the, the basic idea is that, uh, okay, it's a conditional probability. Uh, you can uh, uh, see it as the ratio of uh, trials, uh, so of realizations out of trials. Uh, it's the ratio of uh, the cases uh, that uh, have both uh, Z and Y uh, out of the cases with Z. And it is also uh, the rendering of uh, the consistency of sufficiency to the outcome. Uh, that is used in QCA. Uh, the idea is that uh, regularity is, uh, is uh, established when uh, the ratio is uh, close to one, but which means that you shouldn't have uh, cases with the condition where, the, so when, when, where the condition fired, but the outcome didn't uh, realize. Uh, and the problem is that if you look at the real world, of course, these uh, violating instances are, uh, can be a lot just because first, you may have just uh, omitted so uh, the, the true cause or part of the true cause, uh, the relationship may be spurious. Uh, and also there can be obstructions or obstructions do not enter into the definition of, uh, uh, sorry, of causation, but can explain, can account. So you may want to model, bring them into uh, the model. The second, uh, uh, so the main violation is that, or the main three is that uh, uh, it can be spurious. So uh, you have, uh, sorry, the second uh, so part is, uh, okay, regularity cannot establish it uh, for, for sure. Then you go for the counterfactual analysis. Counterfactual analysis is uh, usually considered uh, to or, or apply to a single case. So if in the single case, uh, you can assume that uh, by removing Z, you uh, would have uh, observed uh, the absence of the outcome, then you can claim that Z is actually a causal uh, factor. Uh, again, in a single fact, in the, in the single case, uh, or these kind of claims uh, um, to be, let's say, recognized should uh, bottom out uh, uh, into some kind of regularity. So you can uh, capture uh, the relationship as, uh, let's say, the symmetric. Uh, relationship, the symmetric uh, uh, probability, uh, the ratio of the cases with uh, without uh, Z and Y out of the cases without uh, Z. Uh, the, the hypothesis, of course, uh, opens a number of, of issues uh, just because uh, for in philosophy, it was uh, uh, contested that uh, white shoes cannot prove that uh, all uh, relevance are black. Uh, but actually, uh, again, QCA does it just because it closes the population, uh, it, it establishes uh, a population, it closes a population. And so 
what uh, you actually do uh, by analyzing the cases without the outcome uh, is to uh, check whether the absence of the condition is, uh, uh, let's say, the condition for having uh, the, the absence of the effect. Um, the issue here is that, again, uh, uh, there is a threat in observational studies. Uh, uh, there can be an alternative true cause uh, at work in the background that uh, uh, make the uh, these uh, violations uh, uh, to the relationship, to the counterfactual uh, uh, relationship uh, uh, arise. Uh, and so uh, the mainstream solution is uh, to go uh, experimental. So by manipulation, if you have a Z, uh, uh, you should see y given z uh, and uh, else you shouldn't uh, uh, see y uh, the issue is uh, this kind of uh, analysis uh, has to be made on uh, twins uh, twins populations or twin populations or twin instances depending on the design uh, and the basic idea, especially in randomized control trials, uh, the one who, uh, let's say, have uh, the head, uh, the, the wider claim of uh, uh, generalizability. Uh, now it's uh, quite uh, restricted to some extent. Uh, um, the basic point uh, uh, is that uh, by randomizing, you should be able to uh, give the same chance uh, of these outliers, uh, these uh, consistency outliers to be present in both groups. Uh, and therefore the difference between uh, the uh, outcome detected in the control group and the outcome detected in uh, uh, the treatment group uh, should be different than one, if it's different uh, from, uh, sorry, it should be different from zero. If it's different from zero, of course, uh, you get the uh, causal effect. You can claim that uh, this uh, uh, Z uh, is causal. But of course, you may never be sure that Z is the only relevant variation. Uh, and so uh, here a uh, further uh, point opens. Uh, uh, um, the way of solving this problem uh, offered by Judea Pearl uh, has been well modeled, but also, of course, uh, on uh, the observational uh, renderings of the Rubin, uh, original Rubin model, uh, has been, well, uh, model your covariates, model those factors that you think that are required for Z to fire and to yield your outcome. Um, and uh, the very, so uh, Pearl uh, understood it as a problem of uh, information. So uh, the cause in this case is uh, the factor that makes uh, the other element irrelevant. Uh, and uh, he, identifies uh, uh, three fundamental shapes in which these uh, uh, three elements uh, can be arranged. Uh, and uh, they are discussed as mechanism. I don't, I mean, the, the discussion of the concept of mechanism would open, uh, uh, I mean, uh, a large uh, discussion. And of course, uh, it, uh, <laughs> exceeds the, 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 the scope of this uh, presentation, but nevertheless. Uh, so the, 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 the first uh, structure, first, uh, first structure is the linear chain. And the linear chain uh, is uh, simply the connection uh, from X to Z and uh, from Z to Y. Again, uh, this may be, I mean, that the, 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 maybe a transfer or, or not of uh, uh, covariation. Uh, but uh, the interesting element is that 
Z, in this case, uh, you prove that X to Y is a causal connection because you have Z that is the mediator that can capture the wall uh, um, covariation and explain it away. And of course, it's uh, connected to, uh, it can be rendered by uh, a series of dependency and independency, uh, independencies between X, Z, and Z and Y, and X and Y. And uh, those are the set of uh, uh, conditional dependencies and independencies that should be observed uh, uh, if the structure was uh, a linear chain. Then you have, uh, there are two further uh, structures. Uh, the one is uh, for the spurious relationship and the other one is for alternatives. So the spurious relationship considers that Z is actually the omitted cause uh, that you want to bring into the picture uh, in order to uh, establish uh, that uh, it, it explains away the relationship between X and Y. And so it proves that X is not causal. Uh, while the collider, uh, it, it's uh, the, the structure of uh, alternatives, you have X and Y that are independent uh, and uh, they they uh, join. They can uh, give both give. Uh, it's uh, again there are different versions for exclusive or or uh, jointly uh, uh, yielding the, the the outcome. But in in this case, Z is the common outcome of uh, X and Y, and X and Y are independent. And the trick and the problem with this structure is that. Uh, X and Y are independent unless you condition uh, on Z. So you may uh, force uh, a, a covariation uh, that is not there. So, and you can imagine that X and Y are connected uh, by uh, causally connected while uh, this is absolutely not true. They, they are independent uh, um, cause of the same effect. So having these three uh, structures and having the uh, dependencies and independencies that identify each structure, uh, I can, I try to answer uh, the main question. This is uh, whether QCA solution have any causal uh, import. Uh, because I, this uh, application of uh, the structures, Perl's structure to QCA solutions uh, uh, is legitimate given that uh, the consistency and sufficiency, that is to say, the, the, the criteria for es establishing that uh, these uh, bundles of factors are actually uh, sufficient uh, for the uh, outcome or the absence of the outcome is exactly a uh, Kolmogor of uh, um, conditional probability and uh, is implemented also in uh, uh, Perl's uh, uh, structures and the dependence, conditional dependencies and independencies that render this structure. So actually what I did uh, has been to apply uh, the dependencies and independencies of the chain and the fork and the collider uh, to the solution terms, uh, um, the parsimonious solution terms uh, uh, taken as the possible Z, uh, the difference maker. And uh, uh, the any other term that was added uh, in the in, by the intermediate minimi minimizations uh, as uh, uh, the X, the possible covariates that uh, make the difference maker trigger. And I found that actually uh, this is the structure of uh, and the relationship between uh, the parsimonious and the intermediate solution. The intermediate solution finds the Z first, okay, in the solutions of clean and the solution of not clean, 
in both cases, I detect the chain as uh, uh, the underlying structure connecting the parsimonious and uh, the intermediate terms. But second, uh, I find that uh, uh, the parsimonious term, uh, the intermediate terms uh, are the covariates and are functionally equivalent. That is to say, I can run it, it uh, um, I can consider it as the uh, first term in the chain, alternatively, and get the same result. So uh, this is something to uh, say uh, about, uh, of course, uh, the causal import of QCA. Uh, the first is uh, QCA can be explanatory. Yes, it can yield the configurational explanations and uh, it can also, I think, uh, uh, provide the covariates. Uh, and so it can also speak to other uh, techniques, especially because um, uh, the, 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 the problem of finding the, 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 the good covariates uh, uh, for uh, a, also a good predictive model. Uh, is uh, felt uh, widely shared uh, by those who uh, are um, into causal analysis. Uh, and uh, of course you have a uh, random forest and uh, so you have pruning algorithms and uh, pr that, that, are that run on, on machine learning. Um, the point is that they may need a, a certain number of, case, of cases before uh, being, I mean, credible. Uh, second, they may not be so transparent and understandable. Uh, so QCA can provide in this um, way uh, a strategy, an alternative strategy for getting to the same result um, and to better interpretable results when uh, the number of cases are uh, is, is small. Um, but of course, this uh, is, is this holds uh, as far as uh, two fundamental uh, conditions are uh, fulfilled. The first is that uh, QCA should be explanatory since the very beginning. Uh, recall that I uh, operationalized a mechanism, a social mechanism, the self-fulfilling prophecy of corruption based on uh, Ostrom theory and uh, the intervening, the institutional design as the intervening variable, the diffusing factor. So uh, in, in this case, uh, it's in, the results are interpretable because uh, the theory was there since the very beginning and uh, it guided the, both the, the selection of cases, the, the selection of cases, the selection of variables and the operationalizations. Uh, that said, uh, the second, uh, I mean, uh, value uh, point of QCA is that uh, it can provide some checks for credibility the credibility of your selection. Uh, if you find the truth table uh, to be without so-called contradiction, so with a high consistency score, so close to the absence of violations to the regularity claim, both for the positive outcome and the negative outcome, in that case, actually, uh, you can think uh, that you, uh, the, the model that you have uh, uh, established uh, is uh, containing some uh, uh, sufficient bundle, an explanatory bundle. Um, and uh, those are actually not so easy to get and uh, not so um, common, but nevertheless are possible. Uh, and so it's just a good theories uh, uh, makes these results uh, credible and uh, good operationalizations also. And that's my bottom line. So thank you so much uh, for your attention.
Thank you very much, um, Alicia. Um, perhaps we can take the slides off and see you fully sure. on the screen. And I will open uh, the floor for uh, questions. Um, uh, my guess is that not many people did uh, QCA and uh, met some of the people here not, did not met, meet the issues uh, that you raise or discuss, uh, but let's see. Um, anyone wants to start? Uh, so if not, I will ask a general question about explanations. Sure. We don't uh, teach explanation in the social sciences, uh, just the logic uh, of the distinction between correlation and causality, I think. This is what comes into the discussion. Um, and I think one of the things, the important things that QCA did to the social sciences and sure political science is to bring uh, issues of causality into the forefront of, uh, of the discussion. This is the, at least where I, I, I met the, the issue um, and started to think about explanation seriously. But how, how did it happen to you? Um, uh, why did you pay so much attention to, to the fact of uh, having an explanation? Uh, uh, just because, uh, yes, my I, let's say I have this uh, background. Uh, so uh, in uh, sociology of law, uh, and uh, there was so disciplines have, and I think that. They, they still have this uh, identity issue. Now, are we humanities or social science? And if you are humanity, then you go for uh, maybe uh, narratives, interpretations, uh, uh, and you uh, underline the, the value of, uh, of uh, the single case, uh, the individualization, the, the exceptionality. Uh, and uh, and this was uh, of course this is important uh, is the utmost importance uh, uh, to have a, a good understanding of of uh, contexts uh, and uh, and uh, what happens in a context. Uh, but I was dissatisfied from the fact that uh, uh, it it has some sort of determinism. Okay. Uh, once that you see the the the, the uh, uh, let's say uh, the world outside as a wall and uh, that cannot be repeated anywhere, you cannot learn. Uh, and on the one side, and on the other, if you happen to live in a, a suboptimal world, uh, it. it seems that uh, you are doomed to be suboptimal to, to the rest of uh, your life. So whatever you do, uh, there is no way, no, no, no escape from, from uh, your destiny. Um, and so uh, the, the, I think that the idea of finding uh, ways of comparing that is a violation to this issue uh, uh, of comparing, not necessarily for forecasting, uh, but for, again, better understanding uh, is uh, something that uh, motivated me a lot. Uh, and, and that's why, I mean, you study uh, the failure of implementation um, and uh, it, it's easy, especially, okay, uh, or you, you get the benchmark uh, somewhere and, uh, and uh, you have to compare yourself with the benchmark. But you never know whether this kind of benchmark is actually a good or a bad thing. Does it work or not? Uh, how can we know? <laughs> this is exactly the kind of, of uh, questions uh, that, uh, that uh, moved me. Uh, into first trying to explain because I thought that explaining was something different and uh, let's say more feasible uh, for, for, for these topics, institutional designs, uh, policy transfer, whatever. 
and uh, but that was that could be quite powerful and actually in the end at the end of the day uh, now i see that there is some kind of confluence uh, uh, the, the idea of uh, being able to explain why uh, can be a far more solid basis uh, for forecasting uh, so it's the reference class. Uh, you, you never know the next instance, uh, what, uh, what uh, will be the behavior of the next instance, but uh, uh, you may have uh, some kind of expectations based on the fact that every case uh, that had those kind of features uh, behaved in a certain way. Uh, and, uh, trying to find exactly the, 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 these are the covariates, these kind of covariates so that uh, given the, 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 the right uh, eliciting factor can yield a good uh, outcome. Uh, this is fundamental and it works uh, both ways, but uh, I think that trying to explain is um, the prerequisite for having a good forecasting. Uh, I'm not mad for forecasting, uh, I have to admit. Uh, I will limit myself to the explaining part, but I will be happy if uh, the explanation can provide uh, uh, arguments and, and uh, better gauges for, for uh, yeah. better forecasting. What's the next steps in uh, explaining for you? Uh, meaning after you did this uh, work, it's part of two papers that I think you did, one on research design, uh, what is the next step? Well, I, of course, this is just an intuition. Uh, I saw that uh, now um, th 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 there are many dots that uh, methodologically can be connected. Um, uh, it can be tested further. So th this uh, overlapping of uh, uh, QCA and uh, directed cyclic graphs uh, can be tested uh, more, uh, I mean, yeah. I would say better first. Uh, also, there is this machine learning uh, idea uh, whether QCA can actually uh, provide the very same uh, result as uh, machine learning. In that case, it could be very interesting because uh, especially for uh, applications in the public sector, I think that interpretability is fundamental and uh, the, the, the algorithm in uh, machine learning are not so transparent. QCA instead is so uh, by establishing the, the equivalence of uh, uh, these results and the credibility of QCA results, uh, uh, I think that uh, it can be used uh, for, for uh, alternative algorithm and more human friendly <laughs> than uh, machine friendly. Uh, that could be uh, something. Yeah. Uh, but at a certain point, I would like to stop and try to use QCA without uh, reviewers uh, saying that uh, uh, you cannot claim that it's Q that uh, it's explanatory because it's QCA and it's not correlational. I would like to, uh, I mean, swipe this argument out of the table. <laughs> <laughs> I think you made a significant uh, step in this direction. I uh, hope so. Thank you very much. And uh, unless there are uh, more questions, um then we will stop here so anyone if uh, not uh thank you very much again Alicia and thank, thank you, you David, uh, for... the rest of you for uh, taking part and see you okay. again in the next seminars of this uh, theories of regulation tomorrow, tomorrow we have one on um, uh, conjoint experimental surveys thank you very much and see you thank soon you again thank you